to our latest episode. In this episode, we're going to discuss how to set up Linux Mint 15 and Windows 7 to live happily beside each other as a dual boot system. First things first, you need to get your hands on a Linux Mint 15 live DVD. Check out linuxmint.com to download one of the distributions there. The installation should be very similar across each of the versions that they have there. Uh, the first thing we need to do though is from within Windows, we need to set up the partition that we will use to install Linux Mint 2. Let's go down and left click on the start orb, locate computer, right click on it, and then click on manage. This will open the computer management console. Here we're going to use the disk management utility. Left click on disk management on the left, and you will notice we see two partitions. We have our system partition, we also have our Windows installation partition, which is the C drive. Notice that both those partitions are labeled as NTFS file system partitions. Essentially what we need to do is shrink the Windows partition, that's the C drive. So right click and go to shrink volume. It's going to go out and pull that partition and see how much free space is there that it can actually live without so we can shrink it. Alright, once it's done searching the partition, the wizard will pop up and we have several pieces of information we need to pay attention to. The first being how large the physical Windows partition currently is, how large it will be after the shrink, how much do you want to shrink the partition by. In this situation, I want to shrink down the Windows partition. So we have roughly about 10 gigabytes of free space to install Linux Mint and the swap partition too. Do keep in mind, if you have more than four partitions already listed here, if you're using an OEM PC that you've purchased that came preloaded with Windows, there's a good chance this may be the possibility. If that's the case, do not proceed as you can, you can cause some other issues with Windows. And this, of course, will not work. So in our situation, we're going to shrink it by 10 gigabytes. That is measured in megabytes. So I had to enter 10,000 megabytes to equal 10 gig. And depending on how large of the hard drive versus how large of the unallocated space you're trying to shrink uh, to accommodate for, this could take a moment. Larger drives, of course, will take a longer amount of time to do this. This is a smaller drive, so it should be complete here in just a moment. And it is. Notice now on the far right, we have roughly just right under 10 gigabytes of unallocated free space. We still have our system recovery partition. We still have our, our C drive or our Windows partition. So now we're good. We can come up to the top and see. Uh, we still have C. We still have system reserve. Notice there's no unallocated space because Windows doesn't know what to do with that space. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And next thing we need to do is reboot the computer. Uh, at this time, go ahead and take your Linux Mint Live DVD or USB drive, whatever you're using, and go ahead and put it in the computer, attach it to the device, reboot the machine, and boot into the Live CD. I'm using a VirtualBox machine, so I'm going to go ahead and go to break and load the ISO file, and I'll be back just as soon as Linux Mint has started loading. Here we are. We're now booted up in Linux Mint 15. I'm using the Mate edition. Uh, so it's using the Mate desktop, which is a fork of the GNOME 2 project. It's also the 64-bit no codec release as well. Uh, once you're booted up within your live environment, double-click on the Linux Mint installation icon. If you've ever installed Ubuntu, this is a near-identical installation procedure. Uh, you'll step through the same wizard. Um, the first box that comes up will ask for your language. Click on Continue. The reason it's so close to Ubuntu is because it is, of course, based on Ubuntu. Uh, here's your prerequisites to install Linux Mint. You need at least 6.3 gig of free drive space. If you're using a laptop, make sure it's connected to a power source and make sure you have an active network connection for updates and language packs as they download towards the end of the installation. The next screen allows us to pick three different options to install Linux Mint by. If you go with the first option, install Linux Mint alongside Windows 7, it will take care of the dual boot for you that's fine if you don't want to get in and learn how to mess with partitioning however I like to set that up myself so we'll go on down if you replace Windows 7 with Linux Mint it will wipe your drive and put Linux Mint on top of it I go with the something else option so I can manually set up my partitions highlight your free space you'll notice we also have two other partitions which are the NTFS file systems from Windows that's our system recovery and our C drive partition with the free space highlighted, click on the plus sign. This will allow us to set up our swap partition. I'm going to create a one gigabyte swap partition. Uh, they say that roughly that the swap should be about 10% of your RAM. So I'm just going to set it up as a gig or a thousand megabytes as this measures. 
In the drop down, make sure you've selected swap area down towards the bottom. I'm going to leave the partition type as logical and I'm going to set the location for the new partition at the beginning of this space. So just leave that as default. Click on OK. The partition editor will then generate the swap partition out of that unallocated free space. Once the swap has been created, it will add it to the list of active partitions that we can see and, and mess with. Um, that part's done. Go ahead and highlight the free space again. Click on the plus sign. This time we're going to add the partition that we're going to install Linux Mint to. Now you'll notice that the free space totals what the wizard prompts. I believe that as default as we just want to use the remaining unallocated free space. Leave the file system, says the ext4. You need to change your mount point to root. And also make sure you've changed your partition type to primary. Once that partition has been generated, it will also be added to the list of partitions. So select the ext4 partition we just created, make sure it's highlighted, then come down and click on install now. That way the installer will go ahead and put in Linux Mint on that partition. On the next screen, we'll be prompted to enter your time zone. Uh, this is for the user account setup. Notice this is all done before the software is actually started to even install. Uh, so go ahead and select your location by clicking the map, or you can also search in the, the text box here. I'm on the East Coast, so I'm going to go to New York. Then click on Continue once you have your time zone selected. The next screen, we're going to be prompted for our keyboard layout. If you're using something other than the English language keyboard, uh, if you're using a, another language or another dialect, uh, you can change that here as well. Uh, you can scroll through the list here and select which ones you need. You can also test in the text box just below that as well. I'm going to click on Continue. Here we're prompted to set up our user account. So go ahead and punch in your name. Uh, you can type this however you like. I'm just going to set up a test account. So we're just going to name it Test. Leave the computer's name as it is. Um, Linux Mint likes lowercase usernames. So I'm just going to leave it as Test. Set my password. You can also choose to log in automatically. Require a password or encrypt your home folder. I'm just going to let it require a password to log in. When you're done, click on Continue and then the software will begin to install. From here, uh, you'll notice that this is the identical slideshow uh, just branded with the Linux Mint logos uh, when compared to Ubuntu. If you don't have any experience installing Ubuntu, vice versa, the installation process is near identical. Uh, you can click through the slideshow if you'd like. Uh, you can also see what's going on behind the scenes by clicking the little drop down flag here to the left of copying files and that will show kind of a verbose mode that allows us to see what's happening in the terminal. You can also hide that. And from here, it's pretty much a hurry up and wait. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cut away, and we'll come back as soon as the installation is complete. And that pretty much sums it up for the installation process. Uh, once the install is done, this pop-up box will come up letting you know that the installation has been finished, and you can continue to test Linux Mint now by using the live CD, uh, but in order for you to see the changes you've made in order to, to mess with the operating system that you've just installed you need to click on the restart now button uh, here's the thing if you're testing Linux Mint that probably should have been done prior to installing the operating system so at this point once you select restart now the machine will go ahead and take itself down and reboot once the machine is rebooted notice we now have the grub boot menu which we did not have before here we have several options uh, we can boot into Linux Mint, we can boot into a Mint Recovery, we can run MemTest, uh, we can also boot straight off the, the Windows 7 partition as well. So to demonstrate that Windows 7 booting works, we'll go ahead and boot into Windows 7. And as you can see, Windows does in fact boot up properly, so we didn't break anything during the course of the dual boot installation. So that's fantastic. So now we simply need to reboot the computer and boot it up into Linux Mint. So go ahead and just choose to restart the machine. And this will reboot it. We'll be prompted with the grub menu and we'll just select to boot into Linux Mint this time around. Once the PC is rebooted, you'll see the grub boot menu. From here, make sure that Linux Mint is highlighted, hit the enter key. If it's not highlighted by default, use your arrow keys to, to highlight it and hit the enter key to select it. After a couple moments, you should start to see the Linux Mint logo start to fade into view. This is kind of a neat little throwback because if you keep in mind, that's kind of what happens when you boot Windows as well. 
The first screen you see, you'll only see if you selected to require a password when you sign in to Linux Mint. Left click the username or punch it in the text box, then you'll be prompted for your password. Enter your password, hit OK. Upon first booting into the Linux Mint, you'll be greeted with this nice little welcome screen. You can hide this welcome screen if the next reboots, um, so you don't have to see that again if you're familiar with Linux Mint. If you're not, it's a good place to start. Uh, it's not where I would stop my education on Linux, but it's a good place to, to kind of kickboard off of. I am using the Linux Mint 15 Mate Edition 64-bit with no codecs. We'll cover installing the multimedia codecs in another video, um, and we'll cover the reasons why they don't include those. Um, in this distro, you can download a version that does have those in it, but we'll get into that in another video. Uh, notice that we have a little menu down in the left corner. Mate is forked off of the GNOME project, so I cut my teeth on the old GNOME too, so it's kind of nice when, uh, when some of the big distros like Ubuntu forced GNOME out, and when they upgraded with GNOME 3. Uh, some of us who like really the layout of GNOME 2, we could jump back into Mate and have something similar, so that's kind of cool. Now you notice I clicked on menu down the left corner, went to computer, this opens our file manager, and we can go in and we, we can actually see my Windows partition here, which is pretty cool. That means that we can access files from the Windows partition from within Linux Mint. Now do keep in mind that if you move a file, Linux Mint can see Windows, but by default you're not going to be able to locate the Linux Mint partition from within Windows. Same thing occurs to, if you delete a file. If you delete a file from the Windows partition, it's gone, just as if you deleted it from within Windows. So now we have our dual boot set up with Windows 7 and Linux Mint 15. If you try to do this with Windows 8 installed, uh, dual boot at your own risk. I can't guarantee that that's going to work. Uh, there are some, some issues there. However, as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to follow us up on techysmarts.com. Uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. All those links are in the video description below. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them here or on our blog. We'll be happy to answer them all. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.